Hey everyone, it's Gavin. We are here for the first live show. I've got a new uh, setup here in the studio and I've been tinkering with, well, all kinds of live streaming tools lately and trying to look for ways to produce more content here on my channels and get more things out without having to spend quite so much time editing. A lot of the problem is I can come up with lots of ideas for videos and things we need to talk about, but even if it's something simple like maybe how to do something in Lightroom or Photoshop or something like that, it becomes a problem. So I have a two camera set up here. I got a few lights and we're just having some fun with it. It'll get better going forward. And I have a couple channels I do this on. This is one of my smaller channels. So maybe at first there won't be a lot of you live and that's okay because this allows me to essentially shoot a video and edit it at the same time. I'm still gonna try to keep these fairly brief, not too long, and keep the quality, thanks to higher quality live streaming tools, more in the range of when I publish a full on video. So we're gonna do this. And shout out to everyone in the live stream. James, come on down, you can, you can be one of my models. And uh, we're gonna look at a session today, actually. I've been doing a lot of kind of fashion type sessions, just collaborations with, with models as a way to practice for me, to practice for them, to get more material. And so as if you guys have been seeing on my, on my channels recently, I've been posting videos on my Instagram at Gavin Syme and at Syme Effects, and of course on the Syme Effects Facebook page. I've been doing a lot of sessions, kind of, kind of like this one right here. And just doing a lot of creative things, experimenting with natural light, with artificial light, a lot of one light kind of work, and just trying to keep simple setups and keep the creativity flowing. And I, I should probably put headphones on and see how this actually sounds. Great. That's good. Uh, we may have a little bit of crossover. I just kind of wanted to show you some scenes from this. Let me turn this one down a little bit because I think it's too loud on video B there. And thank you, James. Yeah, I've been, I'm running two cameras uh, doing a high quality upstream. We've got good internet down here. And I've really been tinkering a lot with settings and lenses. I got a 35 on this one. And, and then I got this wide angle over here, but you can't see me now because I'm showing you this session. So this is just kind of a little bit of what I've been doing and I thought well we need to do more videos. I need to show what I'm doing behind the scenes because you know I've done I've done 20,000 photos in the past couple months of all these different models and and I'm editing and I'm making tools and a lot of a lot of really cool stuff and I'm getting good results like like these. Here's just a couple here and I'll just let these kind of roll through for a minute while I do introductions so you're not simply staring at my face. You can see I got a switcher set up so I can do the two different cameras and we're getting good bit rates and all that good stuff. So let's talk about editing a session. Today's live stream and you can kind of see kind of some of the work that I've been doing here in my recent collaboration sessions with models. And this has given me a lot of analysis of workflow. It's really helped me working on new products like the new Silver 4, like Belladonna 2, thinking about colors and different skin tones and different conditions and also working efficiently. I'm going out on these fashion type sessions and most of the time I'm shooting anywhere between 800 and 1500 images. And that's just becoming routine. And so then I come back and I've got three or four of these sessions stacked up and guess what? I need to, I need to get them out, right? So I've been doing really efficient editing in Lightroom. Of course, before I go to print, I will often still go to Photoshop, use Actions, use Loomis, use Alchemist, something like that to really refine. But when I'm doing these sessions, sometimes three or four of them in a week, and they have a 1, thousand, 1500 images, and I have to go through and I have these models waiting for their results. I have people waiting on Instagram and I need to get the content out. I've really had the opportunity to experiment a lot with those results. And so we're gonna start doing live streams like this that look at hands-on things that answer your guys' questions here on the channel and that kind of do stuff in, in real time. What I have here is this session from Valeria Rico. And I'm gonna switch actually to our combo screen, which will show you my desktop right over here. Bear with me just a moment. This will show you my desktop. You should still have great audio. 
and it will show me and I will hide me when we really get into editing and kind of go back and forth so you don't have to look at this all the time. You don't want to look at this all the time. You're going to want to look at what's on the screen because I've been working with some really uh, beautiful models and a lot of these are new models just practicing, right? That They saw my work and they wanted to go out and they wanted to practice their posing and things like that and different clothes. We have a trailer set up where they can come and try on and choose from hundreds of different uh, pieces of clothing and then they pick some favorites and we go out and do sessions. And so I don't get paid for these, but I do get new material and they get new material. So it's really a great collaboration and I'm doing this down in Central Mexico. It's great for better understanding the culture and, and how to interact with people and practicing mi español porque en muchos veces son muy mal. Okay, but this, this show is going to be in English. All right, let's actually switch over to Lightroom here. And we're going to try and do, I want you guys to tell me what kind of sessions you want to see. I actually just beefed up the computer recently. I got a Ryzen 2950, so I can really do a lot of multitasking. I can stream this uh, in good quality, and we're still going to be able to go through and work these very quickly. Uh, this session for Valeria, we have 1177 images. So you can see there's a lot here. I think a lot of times, when people edit, they think, oh, there's so many images, it's so daunting. And what I've learned over the years, and especially with my modeling sessions, is that you get, if you get yourself trained, if you put yourself into a routine, you can blaze through editing. And it starts with a good sort. Obviously, there's no point in taking 1,100 images. A lot of times you'll see the starts of these sessions, and they can be very, uh, very... Four images at the start because you're getting acquainted with a new model. Maybe they haven't posed a lot before. I don't want to say poor images. They're just, I know they're not always going to be the best. People are a little bit uncomfortable. Let me switch back to screen here and just kind of show you this in real time. So I'm starting with 1100 images. And the goal here is to be able to go through in just a few minutes and edit these. Having your previews rendered, whether you're using Lightroom or Capture One or whatever, I always import the images. I keep my catalog on a fast drive, even though, even though my, my, hang on, I accidentally turned on dual screen somehow, and I don't know how. Let's turn off that dual screen so I don't mess that up. There we go. Uh, one of the things that, that you deal with is you got to go through all these images quickly, but I don't edit first, so I'll get back from a session like this. And I will have this model that's excited. She just went out and did these photos. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna sort the images from to my five stars. And honestly, I might mark four stars. If I'm shooting a wedding, I'll usually do something like three, four, and five stars because I'll wanna tier the images. I'll want more final results. If I'm shooting portraits, I don't wanna be giving them a thousand or even 500 or 300 images. I wanna get it down to maybe the best 40, 50, 60, 100 images, because we, we had maybe six different clothing outfits and six or seven different, uh, different backgrounds, right? So you don't need to get so redundant. Great editing comes down to having the confidence and the courage to be able to edit your images and get rid of the redundancies. You may have two or three images that are great, but they're essentially the same and they're completely unnecessary to be redundant. And so we have to learn to challenge ourselves to be able to say, hey, what's actually the best of the best? I've already started editing a few of these. Not editing, I should say. I've started rating a few of these. And let me go back to the screen and I'm just gonna switch you to my screen mode. And so you can see this here in real time. Let me turn up my thumbnails here. Actually, I'm gonna go to full screen. You can see that I've gone a little bit into this. And what I'm doing is I go through these is I'm just rating five stars. Let me show you those fives for a second. So you can see out of a few hundred images, perhaps I've gotten down and I still only have a few favorites. Now I'm going to be pretty generous with my five stars here. I'm going to put ones in that I might know are probably not going to be used as favorites. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't always know, I don't always know if this Lightroom, I one of my shortcuts for the streaming box keeps turning on my secondary display and it's driving me crazy a little bit, but I will figure that out later. One of the things that's important to deal with is 
that when I'm going through and I'm editing all these and I'm not worried about the exposure, I'm not worried about the post-processing. I'm going to go through and sort these down to five stars and I'm going to be a little on the generous side because those aren't actually going to be my finals. I'm going to take this 1100 images and I'm going to bring those back and end up with something more like 200 five stars. Then I'm going to come through and flag reds because let me show you. If I'm right here and let me turn off any filtering. So we go back to all images right now and I'm just going to turn off thumbnails because we're just going to start flipping through these. And I'm going to do this very quickly. And you can see this is where having your previews rendered and a good processor. See these three images? They're almost identical. A little bit of white balance difference. So I'm not going to select all of those as five-star images because it's redundant. But I'm going to go through, and when I see variances that I like, if I see a difference in the expression, a difference in, in the mouth, even if it's one that maybe the pose isn't perfect, maybe it's a little awkward, I'll go through and I'll generously mark those five stars up so that I can come back later and filter through these and mark down to the reds, which is going to be my ultimate favorite. So I'll have five stars, which are the best, of everything, in my opinion, and then I'll come through and filter only to the five stars and come back and start looking at things like, okay, of these poses, which expressions are the best? Which ones have the most feel? Which one has the best eye contact? Because especially with models that it's their, it's their first time or they're newer at it, there's going to be a lot of of rejections. One of the things you find as a model gains experience, and some of these models uh, I've gone and we've done these training sessions three, four times and they start getting really good very quickly because they start understanding the poses and they start understanding how to work through those. So we're going to go through, this one is a first session and she's doing great, but you can see that there's some that uh, the eye contact isn't perfect. There's some that maybe the expression is a little bit awkward. As a model gains experience, they get to the point where they can actually model in a video, meaning they're essentially posing at every moment. Their movements become so fluid and graceful that it's it's almost like they're a dancer. And this is a great place, I think, for a model to be. And it's almost a goal for me when a model can be consistently on video and have fluid, natural movements is when I know that they're really getting comfortable. Now, as I'm going through, you can see I'm rating these five stars. Sometimes I'm behind on editing and I want to get these models a couple images in the first day or two of when they got their session. So they feel energized and they feel excited about the images. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these. I'm marking fives, but I'm also going to mark a yellow label or some kind of a label to differentiate this on some of these as I go through. The reason for that is then I can come through and quickly filter down and send them three or four favorites. Just quickly apply a preset from Belladonna or something like that and send them a few favorites and we're off to the races. So as I'm kind of bouncing through these and I'm being picky with myself, this is why I will do a lot of images is because I can actually go through, let me check something real quick. How's my, now we're doing good on processor. I can go through and choose these and then come back. Now we're really not going to edit these today. I'm going to show you my process and you can see on the thumbnail strip which ones I'm marking. Some of these, you know, how's the expression? Are they doing something a little bit sensual with the lips or the mouth? How's the eye contact? And so I'm always looking at these different ways. Here's six or seven of the same one and I might go through and say, well, which one looks natural? Which one feels good? Maybe there's one that's a little bit weird, but I like it. And so I say, I don't really care if it's a little bit weird, if it strikes me. If I feel good about an image in any way, I'm going to mark it a five, unless it's just completely redundant, and there's a bunch that I feel good out about that are the same. When you're editing, you want to look for the soul of your images. And this is the case when you're editing video. This is the case when you are editing photos. In this case, we're going through all these frames and we're quickly changing our scene. And you can see, if you look at that scrubber on the bottom, we're going through fast. Sometimes when I start a new pose set, uh, there's a lot that aren't, aren't so good. And I'll skip a lot 
and that's okay, but I try and make sure I'm including some from every post set. This one, I had no strobe. I was just using the natural light here. You can see it's a little harsh in the background, and we were just messing around. We were just experimenting, and you can see I didn't pick very many from that, but I always try and pick one or two from each. We had some harsh sunlight here, and so sometimes I'm working in conditions that I know are going to be rough, and I'll just be experimenting with the pose to see what kind of feel we can get. It doesn't have to be my best of the best in a, in a scene like this to get those five stars because my best of the best are going to be the red labels. I'm going to come back and do a second filter to reds after. And the reason I don't try and filter red first is because I think it's actually faster. I can go through really liberally right now and I can rate five stars on the ones that feel good. But then when I come back and I'm only reviewing those five stars, I'm seeing them in the context of other five stars rather than the context of rejects and blinks and all of those kind of things what that allows me to do is label red the best so i will cut those five stars into reds by about half we're a little bit exposed here again i'm not thinking too much about exposure i'm not thinking too much about processing because i can run that in the back end there's no point in me editing every one of these one at a time so I'm looking at what these images can be. Yes, as I'm going through, I might be analyzing and saying, well, that's a little awkward. I should have told her to put her legs a little closer together. I should have changed that expression. My light is a little bit too harsh. I'm always going to be questioning myself and how I work with an image. However, however, the focus here is sorting. The focus here is filtering. And so that's what we're going through doing. And let me just get rid of myself again because you don't need to see me here. I'm not going to do a lot of zooming in on these. If I see one that I really like that I just you know want to send to the model or something, I might stop and I might edit it. But when I'm in, in true workflow mode, I'm going to be going through at full speed on these. And mentally, I'm going to be complimenting or chastising myself for how good or how bad I did with a particular shot. However, I'm not going to be fretting about that too much. Again, going through. I don't want this to be tedious, but I really wanted to show you guys the process. And most of the time as photographers and YouTubers and people posting images on Instagram, people aren't seeing all of our images. We're, we're only showing the best. And you should only be showing the best generally to your clients as well. But as we're going through these sessions, we're changing clothes on the fly. We're sometimes under pressure. Uh, we're having a lot of different lighting conditions. Although, of course, we try to shoot these toward the late afternoon usually, even though we're doing strobes. Most of them are wandering around cities and trying to do creative things. And so sometimes we're under pressure. Sometimes there's people around. Sometimes a, saying, a scene works better than we thought or worse than we thought. Sometimes the way I posed or composed was a little crazy and at a weird angle. That doesn't matter because the goal is exploration here. And so by being really open-minded when I edit, I'm looking through, I'm seeing which ones are positioned well. When it comes down to the shots where a lot of them are the same, I'm going to be looking at details. I can tell a lot without zooming in. I'm looking at where it's cropped, how their hands are sitting, how is their hair and their expressions. And so I'm just going to be moving through these as quickly as possible and analyzing the images, the expressions. You can see this one is very frowny and weird. And I'm looking through a lot of times on a new pose, expressions will be rough. So I might add one like this. that's not perfect to a five star, just in case there's not another one that I really like. But then I'll come in and I will start adding other ones. And when we come through on our second review, it's actually going to get easier. I'm going to look in a scene like this where this skirt is blowing. I'm going to look for where it's blowing in the most ideal way that kind of has the feel, the classy look, the fun look that I'm looking for. The wind here on this skirt is really fun. I'm even going to look at how harshly the light is reflecting off this metallic skirt because it's pretty intense. And I'm going to be at the same time analyzing the expressions of the model, where the hands are, how the hair, the fingers, the eye contact, all of these things that make it fun.
and interesting. And if I have an interesting image, even if I can tell, some of these I can tell because I was shooting some manual lenses on these. Some of these I can tell are a little bit soft. Uh, I think this was like a, a, an old, an old uh, Pentex 50 mil that I had here. And it can give a really nice texture, but you're on the fly. Focusing isn't always easy. So I don't shoot a whole session with these. I'll put these on and have some fun with them. And then I'll have kind of my old standby lenses, like a 90 mil F2 on my Fuji or an 85 1.8 on my Sony, something like that, that I know is going to do great for portraits. But sometimes you get in a scene and everything's just working and you have a whole bunch of five stars and, and that's fine. If I'm doing this on something like a wedding, I'm actually going to come in and I'm probably going to rate three, four, and five because three stars are like almost like maybe the groups, maybe filler shots uh, for albums and things are in four. And then fives are like those feature shots. Those are the moments. Those are the best ones. And so depending on the type of a session that I'm dealing with, I'm going to work differently in terms of how I rate them. In the case of a portrait session, I really just do five stars and maybe occasionally fours just to mark uh, backups or behind the scenes that I might want to come back to later, uh, but mostly five stars. And then I will come back and take those five stars and rate them as reds or not. So I'm trying to do this in real time without having to edit this so that you guys can see just how quickly we can do this. I know it makes this video a tad bit long. And actually when I'm not recording and having to narrate, it's even a little bit faster because images are flying by a little bit quicker, but you can still see we're loading up pretty quickly. One of the things that I'm gonna do that I, I always try to do with these is even though I'm using an external RAID for my primary image storage because it's so large, I put my catalog and I put my previews for that catalog uh, separate from that. It's even though I have my master catalog, the catalog is stored on my internal M2. Now I'm not thinking about crop too much on a lot of these sessions. I won't have them wear high heels or fancy shoes because we're out on the street. And I know that a lot of these are going to be uh, three quarter length or, or two third length type portraits. And so even though these tennies don't really go with this outfit, um, I am not necessarily worrying about that. Although honestly, they don't they don't go too bad with this outfit. But some of the formal outfits, if you wear tennis shoes or something like that, they don't make a lot of sense. But in the end, when we edit these, I'll be taking my favorites and a lot of them will be getting cropped. And of course, for some things, if we're doing full length, if the plan is to do formal full lengths, we'll get into uh, high heels or some kind of boot or shoe. And oftentimes, if, if I'm on a session and I'm feeling like, oh, these shoes aren't gonna work here, but we don't have anything else handy, I'll just have them go barefoot because it works with almost anything. Now you can see the lighting is changing on these a lot. Um, I'm, I'm adjusting power. I'm running everything on manual with these because I want to be able to always balance and key my subject for my background in real time. And so I'm always looking to have my subject a stop or two above the background and just keep moving. And frankly, whenever I put it to TTL, which can be really good. I'm gonna mark that one a yellow as a reserve to come back and send to my model because I really like it. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not doing any of the red marks right now. I'm just marking a couple yellows so that I have some favorites before I finish this project to send to the model. But ultimately we'll be taking these red, these five stars and marking our reds. Now you can see in this scene, we have nice light, but the green background, we're keyed nicely. Like I was saying, I'm always going to be adjusting my lights and my exposure, my ISO, everything in real time, because mentally I'm still thinking of zones like we talk about in the exposed workshop. I'm always going to be thinking, OK, I want my, my the skin of my model to be zone six, zone seven. I want my background to be down by a stop. And you can see that as we go through here, you're getting to see the raw, crude versions of these. And some of these I nailed it on. And some of these I'm going to probably have to come back and do a little exposure adjustment. But you, you notice, even though I have quick develop over here, I'm refraining from doing exposure adjustment uh, on these in real time because it's just going to slow me down. What I'm trying to do here is get through these as quickly as I can, select those favorites, get the moments and the most emotional images from these sessions and not put myself in a position of second guessing. If I like it, it's a five. If I don't, I keep moving. 
If I realize I didn't like enough of them, I might come back and, and add a five and say, well, you know what? I didn't pick any of those, so let's pick at least one. And then I can decide later. But by having this mindset, by shooting liberally, I'm able to come in and I'm always going to have a lot to work with in these sessions. You can see that even though we're changing locations in these sessions, even though sometimes the models are maybe a little nervous, maybe it's a little new for them, it's, it's going smoothly, it's working because they're getting to have fun, they're getting to try these different clothes and we're putting them in different scenarios. And with these sessions, even if, even if the model that we're working with, it's their first time ever doing any real modeling other than taking selfies, by the end of the session, and I will plan the clothes and the locations we use and where the best light is, by the end of the session, these models are usually relaxing. Even the more nervous ones are usually relaxing and having a lot of fun and starting to feel like models by the end of these sessions. And it's, it's a lot of fun because there's a challenge to it. And at the same time, there's nothing super specific expected of anyone. I don't have to deliver these images to clients in three days. I don't have somebody that paid me and they're waiting for these. So these are really great. I encourage everybody, if you want to improve your lighting and your portrait skills, obviously we want to sell photos. But if I'm getting a reasonable trade, if I'm getting somebody's time, they're, they're dressing up, they're doing their makeup, they're doing their hair. If I'm getting a model like this, that one's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's fine to mix it up. It's fine to collaborate. It doesn't always have to be about an exchange of cash. Sometimes it really is just an exchange of time and skill and experience. And, so, and when I'm working with these models, they have wildly different levels of experience. Sometimes they've modeled before, sometimes they haven't. And sometimes the ones that have never modeled are the most relaxed and fun because they, they don't have any sort of a prima donna syndrome that sometimes happens uh, with models that are more experienced, which isn't to say they're not, they're not good, but you know what I mean? Sometimes it's good on a practice session to not have any demands, to not have any expectations. And it's also really good for a photographer because as professional image makers, we always are, when we're getting paid, we're almost always gonna be working with non-models. And so if I go out and I'm working with girls that have a little bit of practice modeling, or maybe they have a nice Instagram and they just have fun with it, but they're not necessarily professional models, I get to direct and I get to practice and I get to deal with the struggles that come with them. The better a model gets, the more automatic she is, the more her poses are already great. So, you know, if you hire a model that's really good, even if you're not a very good photographer, you end up oftentimes with phenomenal looking images. But with these sessions, I'm having to essentially start the session with every one of these girls by telling them, here's how to model, here's how to pose. And I actually demonstrate a lot of these poses myself that these girls are doing. And no, you can't, you can't see because <laughs> it's ridiculous. And they always laugh. It actually does break the ice when you have this ridiculous gringo demonstrating the poses and the legs and the hands and the eyes. And it's, it's, I've just gotten used to it because it really helps set them at ease. It helps them realize that I'm not taking myself too seriously. And it helps them see, okay, this is how you pose. Like if it bends, one of the first things I say is if it bends, bend it. Like elbows, fingers, you know, don't, don't be stiff, don't be rigid. If it bends, bend it. And I emphasize that throughout the shoot. It's one of the most important tips that I've ever learned in posing and in having people pose well. The other thing that I usually have to express to them is slow down. Don't, don't be neurotic. Don't be nervous. Make a pose and hold it for five seconds and then just slowly and fluidly move to the next pose. Again, you can see I'm not worrying about white balance here. I'm not worrying about the color or exactly what I'm going to do with this. Uh, I have a visualization. I might be thinking what looks. You know, I might use some really cinematic or filmic black and whites from silver or some cinematic color that's really street and subtle from Belladonna, or I might manually tinker with it. But the bottom line is that whether every set that I do succeeds or fails, I know I'm gonna have a lot of good stuff on a session like this. Even if it didn't go perfect, even if maybe I didn't perform to my expectation, they're probably not going to know that because it's probably the best session in most cases that they've ever had and the most thorough and the most fun they've ever had modeling for a lot of these girls. And so it's always fun and exciting 
and it's neat watching them kind of try their different poses and seeing what similarities and what differences there is. Uh, there's a lot of native cultures down here, so you can see that uh, Valeria has kind of uh, native features. Uh, she has some Nahuatl, Nahuatl in her family, and so it kind of gives a really uh, unique look. And of course, everybody it doesn't matter. I don't really care where they're from or any of those kind of things. It's all about the diversity and the uniqueness of each individual model. And so while we're trying to make them sexy, while, while we're trying to have them uh, have fun and get good material that we can put on pages and Instagrams and things like that, I'm always going to be looking, just like if I was hired for a wedding or a senior portrait or something, I'm going to be talking to them. I'm going to be asking questions, e even in my crappy Spanish, as bad as it is. I'm going to be trying to interact with them and figure out what looks they like. I'm going to be planning these sessions. Uh, and before they ever arrive, I'm going to say, well, what do you want to pose in? Some of them might just want to dress. Some of them might be uh, feeling a little more sexy and want a swimsuit or lingerie or something like that. And some of them might start out really conservative because they're afraid that, you know, this photographer might be some kind of a creeper. And then when they realize I'm a gentleman and we're just there to make nice photos, they might relax a little bit more and try an evening dress or something like that or a swimsuit or something that might be a little bit daring for them. But I don't try to push them into any particular thing. Obviously, as an image maker, I'm doing fashion sessions. I want creativity. That arm on the right is way too stiff. If it bends, bend it, remember? But some of these are cute. So even though the arm might be a little stiff, uh, there, these aren't absolute rules. And I will still save a couple of these, but you'll probably notice along the way that I had to remove shortly after this. This is fun. You can see I've edited this. I was tinkering with it for black and white. Um, but most of these you're seeing, virtually all of these are untouched. Again, looking for creative objects as we pose, as we move the light. I took the shoes off here because it's more formal. I wanted it to be fun, but not tennies. And it's actually, I kind of like, even though it's a little eclectic and weird, she's got these blue socks on next to this kind of formal evening dress. Uh, you can tell that by this point, she's relaxed, she's having fun, and she's looking great here. And so I'm just going to go through, I've got a lot of five stars. We're almost to the end of this. What have we been doing this? Like 30 minutes. And we've pretty much gone through and filtered down over a thousand nearly a thousand images, because a few of them I had done before we started. I actually started editing this session this morning, and I said, you know what, I should go live. I really should be going live with this and start experimenting with different things that we can live stream here on the channel, because if I had to record this as a screencast and then edit it and do audio and stuff, it, it, it just it would have taken most of my day. But this way, I can actually work while streaming and sharing ideas and I'm sure some of these streams will suck and you guys will be like, this is long and boring and it's too annoying. And some of them will be fun and exciting. And tell me what you want. You let me know how you think. Is this too many images to go through? I know it kind of is, but I wanted to show you the process of essentially going through an entire session and how quickly it can actually be. Because once you get through this culling, I'm not marking rejects. I don't worry about marking rejects. I mark favorites. And Everybody does have a little bit of a different process for how they do this, but I'm going through and finding the ones that look good. I'm marking them and I'm moving on. I can tell these are, need to be pushed up by maybe a half a stop, something like that, and that I'll need a little bit more. At this point, she's getting really relaxed. She's been posing now for a couple hours. And you can see that she's just kind of having fun with this and enjoying the fact that she's in front of the camera. And most people, if you encourage them, if you show them kind of the ropes and and you just get them feeling good and make them comfortable, and pretty soon they're going to relax and you're going to just start getting one great image after another. And this is the point. A lot of times at the end of these sessions, the light is getting good. Uh, the model is getting relaxed. And it gets to the point where there are so many images that I'm like, this is too many because you can have 10 variants of a pose or how she's holding her necklace or the way she's standing. And it's still like, isn't this redundant? Like, I feel like as photographers, as image makers or video editors or photo editors, we have to have the self-confidence ourselves to be able to limit. And that's why I actually am editing, tw I'm, I'm calling twice. I'm rating everything to five stars. And then I'm coming back and I'm rating to favorites because I get a second perspective. And somebody might say, well, that takes too long. It's more efficient just to do it all in one pass. 
And there might be a time to do that. And maybe with a wedding or something where you're expected to have a lot more images, just a single pass is fine. But the reality is I always want to come back and get perspective on any type of a session that I'm doing. And so by doing it this way, I don't actually add much time. In the end, I think I save time because I go through, I got the fives. We're done, by the way. We just rated fives. Let's see how many five stars we got. We have 251 five-star images here. Now, that's that's pretty cool. I, I think that's I think that's great. Let me actually switch this over. And 251 images. Let's just get an overview kind of, of what we have. We're not going to edit these today, but you can see I have some of everything from every single one of our poses and our scenes that we did. And we can just kind of come back and now we can come back and edit. Let's filter these down to the fives again. Okay, so we're looking at only fives and I'm not going to do the editing session here because it would make this too long. But as you can see, I've got my five stars here and I can filter to those. But now remember I was doing those yellows because I, I haven't gone through. I'm going to go through all these again and just mark the reds and probably cut these in half once again. And those are what I'll actually do my final edit. And that happened. That's very quick because I don't have very many to go through. I have all my favorites. Now I can just do and cull down to bases. But remember I marked some yellows. I can come in here now and say, hey, I got these yellows. And I can quickly go in, pick a few favorites in these and send them, for example, to my model. And so I could say, hey, here's four or five really fun ones. You did a great job. And that's a great way to encourage your model if I can follow up with that within like 24 hours. So I can come here, I could do maybe some interesting black and white with this. Uh, usually I'll just go in and I'm always gonna use my best presets to quickly go through and edit these sessions because they're gonna save me so much time. It doesn't mean that I won't come in and do individual edits and mix things up and manually change things, but I'm going to go through and just kind of pick looks that work. I like how the blue is in this one. I'm just going to dump the exposure up a little bit. I'm going to go in here. I like the papillaria sign in the corner, and I'm going to crop it just a little, make it a little straighter. See how I'm following that blue line? I still have my papillaria sign in the corner. I'm going to keep her legs right about where they're at. I like that break point pretty well, and keep her right in the third, and boom. So I can go through and just quickly edit uh, four or five images like this, send them to my model, and now they're going to be excited. They're going to be pumped up knowing that I'm not just a hack and that I haven't forgotten about them and that I actually do really good work. And they're going to be excited for the rest of them. And just like that, I can just export these and, and I have them and it's done. And so, yes, that is our session. We just sorted all these images uh, they're still in their raw, crude form. We have to edit, we have to experiment, we have to see what works on all of these, and that's going to be really easy too because we have our presets and we have our controls and everything we need to get there quickly. So if you guys like this, let me know. Let me know how I should change it. If you want to see more sessions where I'm editing or I'm sorting, where you kind of get an inside look into these sessions, or if you want me to do more videos where I'm doing the filtering beforehand and what I'm showing you guys is only the best of the best and how I edit and then talking about poses and what's good and bad. If you want to do some shows where you send in your images and we talk about it and we have some critiques, let's do it because now that I have my live stream set up refined, there really is a lot of flexibility in what we can do here. I know we had hardly anybody in this chat live stream because what are we at? We only have like 7,000 subscribers on this channel and that's fine. We'll get there, we'll keep working on it and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So I'm gonna keep making content here. Um, I'm also hoping to do this for simple tutorials like installing presets, managing things. Just when you guys have questions, when things come up to my email inbox from our SimeFX support channels, uh, new videos, on, for example, on the new Silver 3. I hope this week to do a video on the new Silver, excuse me, Silver 4 uh, presets for Lightroom and Capture One and show you guys hands-on how I will then use those, how to take best advantage of them. And I might try just doing that live and in real time. And it's a challenge for me to keep it short. I didn't keep it so short today. We're at, what, 40 minutes? But we did review a 1,000 photos. So I think overall... We actually did okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up. 
Thank you all for watching. Those of you that are watching after, let me know what you think and, and how we did and whether you enjoyed this or not. And we'll keep refining the content we do here on the channel. Uh, please hit that like button, the subscribe button to this side, this side, isn't it? Hit those buttons, hit the bell icon so you get notified when we're doing uh, more live streams and let us know what kind of content you want to have here on the Sime channel and we'll see what we can do. All right, peace guys. Take care.